Thank you, Scott, for uh, that kind of introduction, and thank you for, for joining me. Um, I was going to uh, share with you, actually, something I've been uh, working on for the last four years, and something that's really of great interest to me. Um, it's uh, related to this whole uh, question of uh, reproducibility and replicability. Just to kind of give you an idea of uh, uh, how I started getting interested in this. You hear quite a lot nowadays, everybody talks about in the paper, if you have to submit a paper, you have to uh, submit also the data and the artifacts of uh, the publication. But the reality is when we publish a paper, these are just the final results, but usually it's really difficult to assess what the methods and what it really took to really uh, produce those results. But this actually became to me uh, close to my heart where I typically have been doing high performance computing for the last 30 some years. And quite often you have a research group or you have a team of people and they will do great work. And in, in average, uh, a graduate student will say five years and postdoc two years. And when you have that senior graduate student who has been doing great work, he get a job, he leaves. But after he departs, nobody knows how to or reproduce what they've done. And I've, less, I've lost a lot of people like that where uh, they were the key, but they never documented. And even in some cases, they will document, but it's really difficult to even go back and, and redo what they do. And then that's what really, for me, the question became when we talk about reproducibility, and, and I'm going to go back actually redefine it a little bit, is because for me, at the end, I'm trying to figure out how to make it easy for capturing that so that when that person leaves, but that knowledge stays. Basically, what I'm presenting to you it would be really an update or some of my involvement among that. The, I have 30, 20 some minutes probably now, but what I wanted to also uh, share with you is some of the summary of uh, one of the national academies uh, that uh, really did a good report. I would strongly encourage you to read if you haven't done so. And then I'm gonna summarize, there's so many initiatives, and then I'm gonna have a disclaimer here. I'm gonna have some of them on my slides, but by no means is inclusive because there's so many out there people doing different things, but by no means all of them are important in some aspects. But I want to just kind of point out some of what I, I believe for me are some of the existing gaps on why we can achieve reproducibility. And then I'm going to also then uh, spend the half of my time sharing some of the preliminary results of some of the work and the tools we've been developing. And then I will end by some of the initiative we're trying to drive the community uh, to really, how do we democratize this? How do we make it simple? So uh, first is uh, the report I just mentioned to you, if you go on this DOI, you can download a copy. Uh, one thing in the report they did that I really kind of like was uh, they kind of uh, define what reproducibility is. You will see on your right hand side here, uh, usually, there's so many people when you talk about reproducibility, some of them reuse, uh, restore, recycle, regenerate, review. Each one of them has a subtlety. Each one of them means different things. But uh, what I'm going to focus on, actually, for me, is going to be really uh, at the heart is really the whole concept of reproducibility. And I'm going to kind of narrow it down to what I think is, how can I just get whatever the input follow, the methods and the, whatever you did, so that if you're not there, I can not just replicate the results per se, but also understand what you did. I think for me, um, one of the things I would like to even add to this definition of the National Academy is not just to run it as in like in a Jupyter notebook and that's it, but I gotta have enough for me to say, okay, I have enough of understanding what is in the back. And you will notice here that I put this, what I want to talk about reproducibility. There's also other people who spend a lot of time talking about numerical reproducibility when they do really bit by bit reproducibility. That's not really what will be the focus here. So when the National Academy, which is really strongly recommend you to read and just for your leisure, did what the National Science Foundation did also as part of the advisory committee, for cyber infrastructure. They convened a working group that wrote also a report on advising the National Academy on concretely, how can we make those recommendations that were in the report uh, basically feasible? Because if there's no incentive 
uh, there's no way this is going to have any tea because in reality, a lot of the funding agency today, they'll give a lot of funding. And then three, four years down the road, somebody else will apply for the same funding. And most of the time, we reproduce the work that was already been funded before because nobody can reuse what was funded before. So another good work that I would strongly suggest to read, and I happen to be also part of that working group, with my, uh, was led by Mark Haru from uh, Sandia. Um, uh, the other thing also, this is also important because these are all things that are really driving, and I will assume probably on the continent here there might be a similar um, uh, initiative. Uh, a lot of the funding agencies in the United States in particular, now they are really requiring that anything that has been funded, uh, that the result of those results be shared. And then as a matter of fact, by January 25th, uh, the National Institute of Health, uh, for you to get funding, you really need to follow a plan that you can show how you're gonna share. But what also they added actually, which is different this time, is the data has to be able to be reused. Also uh, accountability on how do they gonna be able to ascertain that what you propose is really accurate. So all these are really driving circuit. When you say data sharing, you have to be, you can share data that I'll be able to use. Again, it's back to, how can we share something that is very really, uh, useful? And I'm gonna add this, and you've seen a lot of data life cycle, and it is also research data cycle, but many of them, there's the different flavors, but this is one of mine that I've adopted over the years. But what I wanted to point out here, we are the CHPC conference. You have access to computation resources, and usually at every computing center, any institution, you will have access to people who are computational scientists that will help you. But what is actually missing a lot of our computational centers is there, there is not enough support uh, that provide you or how to help you develop, while you're doing your research, as you capturing enough metadata or software tool that will help you enable at the end of your research project to help you to capture the artifact that you say then, okay, this is what I'm gonna share that will be reproducible. For me, you're gonna hear me at the end, this is something I'm gonna promoting that our center, we need to think how to provide all those services and how we provide the infrastructure as I will show some of the example. So I, I was trying when I was preparing this slide to kind of do a cartoon and I apologize is my, my cartoon beginning is really sloppy, but I will imagine many of you have been graduate student, you start a project, you're gonna start doing some running some job. The first time, time it doesn't work, you change the method and sometimes you even change the project altogether. And then you get some results and then say, oh, you go to your advice and say, no, this is not what I'm looking for. Let's try to do something else. And you wasted three months. And then maybe down the road, the, the advisor say, oh, what you're doing actually figure out how to do it. And then this is how you're gonna continue. And then you do. And then sometimes you, you feel like you're desperate. I remember many of you have gone through that that phase after two years of my PhD, I was asking myself, what am I doing? And then you find some you know, colleagues and things and so forth and you publish. But what we are assisting today, when people publish, they, when they say they're doing the figure, they're just showing only that little picture in that paper. For me, that's not really what I'm interested in, is what, how do I capture whatever I did here in a way, by the time I got this result, basically it's when you started, is what did you do to get to that final result? I think for me, that's what you're gonna hear me. I'm trying to dream about how to capture that and make it seamless. And what we're gonna think my vision, and I strongly believe I, when I started this, I used to have an afro, I used to still have hair, but hopefully by the time I lose my, my, hair, my gray hair, we'll have this where you're going to CHBC, you are doing your research, by the end, it helps you capture all of that seamlessly. And that's what we're really gonna be promoting here. And then I added this because when you think about actually, uh, and I probably am not an expert workflows, what people are using like a Jupyter notebook, sometimes the nice book for some of the disciplines, it really will trace you a well-defined path. But before you can do that, it's an art of thought sometimes that you will develop that. But sometimes the real life is really pretty kind of messy here because some of them end, some of them they don't end but you're trying really to capture back that short path to the beginning. But you could argue there's a lot of workflow once they're very well established, you can basically kind of capture that and be able to do that. 
but the real research is really more complex. So this was just to paint you the picture. I like it. This is also a, a, a picture of my colleague, because now they will talk about research data, and then we also talk about uh, reproducibility. Now we have like uh, Git repos where you can share code, you can do best practices of sharing software. The data also, there's some you know, good repositories, but the whole repository concept I'm trying to introduce here, you can think about we're trying, how do we really bring all these things all together? This is really what I'm really after. And then we also, um, uh, Juliana also uh, NYU, uh, when we were working on our report, also she came up with also this other cartoon also, where you know some people you will have the data. There's also this involved computational environment, which because you want to capture also you have to capture the computational environment on which it runs because it might not necessarily run on a different one. And then you also have all this workflow that we talked about of some kinds. And then at the end, then you produce what this. Uh, I'm going to be calling it the artifact on what you're going to share. So this is just showing you, the, we, we're trying to kind of conceptualize what we are really after and what's the problem here. Now, I want to also add here, there are a lot of good tools out there. I mean, by no means uh, that um, uh, there is uh, work that is not being going. Jupyter notebooks are very good, but most of the people usually Linux systems and they don't use this. Uh, big community that still don't use Jupyter Notebook today. And then usually Jupyter are really also quite linear. In other words, it's really well, you know, it does not capture really that uh, eco, uh, that picture that I just painted to you. Containers, very powerful because you can basically capture everything. And then that's what we also been leveraging and packaging what we share. And then GitHub and, and so forth uh, and so on. So there are some, uh, tools that are there, but they're not complete themselves. And there are also some questions that for me, once I'm using all these tools, then I say, okay, when I have the, every time I download, if somebody share with me, do I ask myself, is this really complete enough for me to reproduce what I, and most of the time it's been really rare that I could achieve that at once. And then the biggest problem for me is the third bullet point. People are now packaging the reproducibility items, usually at the end, because the publisher requires this, because you have to do that. Then you have to remember things you've done many years ago, and it's already too late for you to do that. So, and then that's when I was asking myself, well, if existing tools or repository are really uh, sufficient today, and the answer has been not to my uh, understanding. So we observe all those, and then for me, what we are, we are coming to the conclusion that um, we need to uh, create some uh, artifact that will be collected throughout the time. I, I don't know what uh, something is. Yeah, okay, thank you. <laughs> that some of the, 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 the capturing of the metadata need to happen while I'm doing research. And then when we did an experiment at the University of Chicago, when we asked the graduate student to do that, and many of them were really reluctant because the amount of work that were required to do that after was just too much. And then the question became, because I run a computing center, how can I make it that capturing seamless to them? In other words, instead of being manual, what they are doing that research and we are capturing the, the metadata. That's when um, I started actually the, the thinking about my project. But besides that, I also wanted to uh, add this, uh, acknowledge a lot of these other initiatives. And I've tried to capture them in four different buckets. Actually, when I was doing this, I figured maybe I should believe another fifth one. Some of them are basically kind of repositories. You will see like Dataverse, Dryad, Zenodo, and, and so forth, where, where the people traditionally been loading, uh, putting things there. But the data is not really curated. And nobody really checks what's being put there that you can really reproduce that. But then you also have what I like to say, this encapsulated tool that are really becoming very popular, like Collab and Blinder and et cetera. Those are just also tools, but they don't really achieve the whole full spectrum. And you have also workflow engines, and then as well as also other uh, provenance capture that code ocean in particular, is also really attempting also to try to cap capture a little bit of some provenance. But download again and try to reproduce, you will see again where the limitations are. But for me, what I'm trying to do 
to think is like we need something that really kind of in span sit in, in those big corner. And that's what really we're trying uh, to, uh, to do with our research project. So what I was saying about four years ago, we were also doing that, let's say publish and people would do afterthought. And then I realized after a year, there was no way that was gonna be scaling. And as a matter of fact, I really ran an anonymous uh, survey and I got two response that was really enlightening to me. The graduate student was saying, we are not interested in doing this because actually they were not cutting corners anymore for the advisor because now the advisor was going to peer review everything. It was one of the biggest enlightening. The younger faculty were reluctant because usually many of them, that's what the secret source. And by publishing, making it open at the beginning of their career, it was just not the motivational part. But those are things that can be addressed different ways. So what we ended up doing uh, we ended up kind of focusing on uh, what I like to call uh, developing really tools. Because for me was, how can we make this seamless? In other words, my idea is all these researchers have access to my account. When they are doing their research, we are capturing that, them even helping knowing that we are capturing that. And at the end of the project, can they then package and then push that artifact? And that's what we were trying, we've been trying to do. And then what we ended up doing we, we have been developing modular uh, node. One of them basically, when I say metadata, capturing that information. In other words, when I say we try something, it doesn't work. But as you're trying, we are really collecting all that. Of course, we had terabytes of data the first time, but that's another question we are trying to solve. But we had the raw information from which we can mine and extract that knowledge as we try to track back to reproduce the artifact. And that's when the workflow capture comes after you finish, because we can really go backwards and then capture the provenance, and then we can capture and then create that container and then go the DOI and then uh, share. So the initial project we did, because usually when they say, okay, you do this, how do you know that uh, this is really working on the real life problem? Because of course you always try with the Mickey Mouse problem. I took one of the, the, the project uh, that actually took a year for this particular faculty in chemistry, uh, Greg Wolf's group, which is very well known in computational chemistry. They do a lot of molecular dynamics. Actually, Iran um, developing now one of the exascales uh, uh, code uh, to be running on Aurora um, uh, soon. But what we tried to, um, this, this actually picture was done actually after. Oops. Was was done after the, okay. Uh, it was done after the, the, we were trying to build the workflow because once you really build, then you can understand some of the steps. So we basically can identify some of the major nodes. When I say the different step, when they change, they do a lot of uh, activity. You could see some places they are generating new data. Some of places they are actually manually creating also new that you have to be able to, to capture. You can capture what's, my, uh, um, what's done on the, on the system, but what is done manually, then you have to provide the ability to add that particular information to your metadata information. So at the end, you could really um, uh, create all the connections after you have completed. And then at the end, basically the tools can generate the metadata, generate the flow, and then uh, create the container at the end. Uh, so you may notice the, the first, I had the, my initial uh, uh, picture here. I had the, this, this call is the data hub at the Chicago, that's where we usually store then all those artifacts after they are uh, packaged within the paper. So we, that was actually done before we start developing the tools. Now we are actually gonna, before it looked like this, which means you will have a paper where we can basically uh, take every picture, every result in the picture, any table, any result basically, the associated data, that metadata software tools were basically um, uh, collected and, and then and provide within and then exposed. You can basically kind of download all of that. But that was actually done before, but now with the ability to create all these uh, tools automatically, then those tools feed this, this repository because then you can push all of that directly within that particular repository. 
And then at the end, you can even pack it for the entire paper. What we are also intended to do in the Data Hub 2.0 is basically to create the interoperability with other existing repository. So uh, I know we are running out of time, uh, but uh, to achieve the reproducibility, the, yeah, thank you. Um, I think I wanted to mention a couple of things here. This is just a beginning, actually, for me. I was trying to prove some of the proof the concept, and I'm very convinced that it will require three major things to be able to, to achieve. We need to co design the new infrastructure we are running on for me to be able to create also middleware that will really capture all those to be integrated in the environment instead of you at the end being able to do that at the end of the, the, your research. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we also need to change uh, that we need to do that, the capturing what the research is doing. In other words, the same way some of us, when we, we studied the uh, graduate school, you take Calculus 101 or English 101. You can think of it for me having reproducibility 101. This is where they teach you, anybody, all these little tools, Git, all this, because those have to be your, your tool that you're going to have to be comfortable to be able to achieve the re doing research. And once we, we conduct how we do the research, we rethink how we could do the research so that every biweekly meeting when my, my group member come and produce the result, they are producing actually those artifacts as already in those form so that we don't have to be doing it at the end. We also need to rethink how we train and support our, our, our graduate students and researchers because as part of our center, in particular facility that provide those resources, to include those as part of a regular training become so that some that can have a go-to place to, um, to have access to this. So by achieving that, I'm really convinced that we will then have infrastructure that could be also interoperable because if I'm at Chicago collecting this in particular discipline, and then somebody at Stellenbosch or Cape Town or another university in Botswana, we need to, the data has to be interoperable, or at least. Uh, to minimize the need to require standards because going that right we're never going to work. Um, and then that way, at least we can uh, promote uh, reproducibility, not just for the purpose of publishing, but for me, it has to be also part of the education and research and so forth. So lastly, uh, one thing I've been trying to, uh, to also do is while I strongly believe this is doable, I've, I've proved myself, uh, I've also said, how do you make it that the more, like uh, people start doing it at our university and any university? I studied this at the, this is a conference called uh, PERC, used to be the old exit conference in the US uh, that took place in July. We convened all the universities, was like almost 60 universities together, say, okay, how can we start supporting this? We say we're training the user, all of us to share at least even the note or the how to, because Believe me, I was even on the flight yesterday still learning about some other new tools. Even just to share the knowledge what exists today, for me, will be already a big win. Nobody, all of us need to be reinventing the wheel, but can we even share that? And then we continued that conversation recently, a couple of weeks ago, in Dallas at Supercomputing Conference, and in a, another birth or further, and then the same enthusiasm not to drive. So we're going to be actually pushing all the universities uh, 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 in the units to really together to create this community driven uh, to try to democratize and try to making use of this. So I'm really going to end by calling upon you because I'll be really happy that the, the continent also, uh, we can continue to also have it's part of this community, people from here in the Southern Africa. And I just want to end by acknowledging some of my colleagues. And then this is my email for those who are interested in, in reaching out to me. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, why don't we have our next speaker come here as we take, um, let's go for two questions. Thanks very much, Barali. This is a topic that's very close to my own heart because uh, I do most of my work in the computational mechanics field and we have a very large problem with reproducibility and published data. Um, I 
Yeah, I think uh, it's maybe more of a comment than a question, but are you thinking forward in terms of, you know, it, at the moment you're looking at these frameworks to capture the whole uh, the whole workflow. Um, so that's kind of transmitting information one way, sort of from the researcher to the, to the tool. Are you thinking about ways that you can actually have automated testing continuously of reproducibility inside those tools as well? So, you know, almost the tools are building the reproducibility framework and then testing themselves to see and possibly giving feedback to the researcher when something happens that says, oh, something's changed. The results have now changed. I'm not able to reproduce what you're doing. Um, I'm thinking in terms of, like you mentioned, GitHub, for example, they do a lot of uh, automated unit testing and things like that inside their tools. Um, and it's actually quite a powerful thing to automate, uh, to take the workload off the, uh, the researcher. Otherwise, they're always having to go back and actually test, does their reproducibility artifact actually reproduce what they're doing? <laughs> Thank you for that comment. That actually, I mean, this is just a subset of uh, the big vision. But uh, there's been a lot of work, actual conversation along those lines. Because one of the big aspects, actually, is really the testing, even of that artifact. Actually, there is even a group at University of North Carolina that studied actually doing is a completely separate group that is really doing all the curation. It's a completely they are doing it manually. They are hiring people. For me, I strongly believe some of this should be automatized. And then actually one of the, in the co-design of the infrastructure, we believe when I say the reproduce in for the future, is you can think about even having a system that before it goes through even the repository, it goes through the testing before it gets actually approved. You can create those, those aspects that way. And this is just state, it's just the beginning. That's why for me, by having a community, we can have, let's say, different group focusing on certain aspects, and then at the same time, we can all those results kind of converging and sharing those. But there's a lot of, uh, I say I had the four, I say the fifth, there was exactly what that one. There's also another one for curation of that, that really there's also some new tool that people are developing to make those those also to automatic. Okay, one fast Very question. fast. So it's not even going to be a question. It'll be a shameless plug. So the last week of June of 2023, we were forming a new conference called SIGREP that will be at UC Santa Cruz. And it's going to be completely reproducibility focused. So there's a venue that's going to be three days to, dedicated to trying to solve some of these problems. Okay, let's thank the speaker one more time. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.